Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about creating S functions in Simulink, which are something similar to the MEX files that you had in MATLAB. But now we want to implement this uh, C code into a block in Simulink. So you can basically use it there for simulations. And uh, the S function, there are different ways to create S functions. One is uh, doing it from scratch. The other one is to use this, what we call legacy um, code tool or LCT. And the other one is in Simulink directly, there is something called S function builder. What I'm going to focus on in this video is the legacy tool and the S function builder, which are easier than to start from scratch and uh, create the S function. So let's talk about the legacy. Uh, so legacy code is a tool that you can integrate, as I said, existing C or C++ code by using this tool into a Simulink block. So in order to do that, you need to have a source file and you need to have a header file. Now, let's say what you want to do is very simple. You want to create a block that when you pass to it two numbers A and B, it returns the ratio A plus B over A minus B. Okay. Yes. So you create a function double in your main uh, source. You call it double my ratio double of A and double of B. The output C, which is double, is A plus B over A minus B. Okay, so that's your source file. And then your header file is basically, which in, it is going to include this uh, ratio H included, is uh, you see that it basically declares this um, uh, function and it is going to include it, right? Yes. So uh, you see here in your... Um, the first line of your source code says include ratio.h and this is ratio.h where the format of the file is written and use this if and end if if and def and uh, and if to such that you use them for that uh, if this uh, inclusion this definition here has not been done earlier before calling this then it adds it here so if this um, inclusion and this definition is already basically done in a previous code, then it does basically ignore the rest of it. But if it's not, it makes sure that this uh, definition and the uh, format of the uh, function is basically there. So all you need is to go to C blocks and say, I want to create a, um, a header and you give it a name, you call it ratio. Once you do that, it's going to give you these three lines already. So all you need to add is this basically signature or the uh, syntax of the function, which I directly copy and pasted from my source code. So once you have these two, now let's go to this M file, which creates the uh, MEX files. And once you have the MEX files, you can compile and uh, as I said, you're, uh, you will compile your um, MEX file object or structure into a binary, which then can be inserted into uh, Simulink. So here, again, you might need to do your MEX setup. Now, let's say your MEX setup is already done. Okay, so you're good with that. The first thing you do is you create a structure for this S function. You say def and or any other name doesn't matter equals legacy code initialize. What does this do? As I said, it initializes the structure of the S function. So look, when I run this, see what happens. Here, you see it creates a structure for that S function and it has a bunch of fields. You don't need to fill all of them, but some of them are mandatory to do. You need to provide the name for the S function. Sometimes you might need to have some initial conditions. In this case, I don't. You need to uh, talk about the uh, header file, the source file, and um, the output function specifications, which tells uh, uh, MATLAB compiler what kind of input outputs, what kinds of inputs and outputs you are uh, supposed to get. 
So look here, the first thing I do, I say def.s function name, I fill the first field, I give it a name here, I call it my s function, give it any name you want. Then I say def output function spec, this one. What is it? This is the format of what? This is the format of that function. That the output, which here I called y1, is my ratio of u1 and u2. Then uh, I say, what is the source file for it? Def.source file, that's main.c, right, which I have. And then the header file is that ratio.h, so these two files. And once I have these four important pieces of information, I'm ready to convert it into a MEX file and compile it. Okay, so you do not need, as I said, to provide the information for all of them. But this uh, first one, the name, the third one, the format of the input output, and the source file and the header file. These four are mandatory. You have to provide them. Okay, again, if you have some initial condition, you need to provide that. If you want to uh, give it a specific sample time for that uh, block, you might need to what? Say uh, dot sample time. Okay, here you see it says inherited. When it's inherited, that's the same as in Simulink, you say sample time negative one. Okay, so you don't provide a sample time for it. You let, uh, let it inherit from the other ones. Okay, but if you want, you can do that. So here we go. I go ahead and provide these uh, four fields. Now, if you look at def, you can see that those four fields are provided. You can see, so that is enough for the MEX generator to create it. So now you say legacy code again. You use the legacy code and you say what? S function CMEX generate. You're asking it to do the CMEX generation. For S function, you and apply to what? Applying to this structure def that has the information. You say, okay, look, go ahead and create me the CMEX uh, generate for S function using this structure def. Now, if you look here right now, if you look, I have these two guys. Okay, let's see if I can delete them. There we go. So right now, I do not have any file here called my s function, right? But as soon as I run this line of code, look what happens here. Okay, so look. You see, it generated the C++ code, or C code in this case, that is appropriate for compiling into a binary. Look. If you look at this, this has a lot more lines of code than your simple main or your simple ratio. Look at that. Here, it has all of those things that I explained earlier in my videos. It has the uh, gateway function. It has a lot of checks of inputs and outputs, right? So look at that. It generates all of these for you. You see, it's about 180, 90 lines of code generate, terminate, and everything, okay? And all it does is literally this portion here. It calls basically the legacy function. It calls this main. And you see again that it does handle the calculations through pointers, okay? You see that? So it generates this C file for you. Now that you got the C file, now you compile it into a binary. Okay, so compile as function from C file into a binary. So now you use legacy code compile. You pass to it that the structure. You see right now I only have my S fun C. Now look what happens when I do this. You get a, a MEX file. There we go. Look. The MEX file completed. It was successful. And now if you look, here we go my s fun uh, dot makes windows 64 bits you see so now i got the things that i needed and really simulink needs this guy but okay yeah i created all the things that i needed so now let's go to simulink and create a block for that so let's say here i want to pass five and four to that ratio function and it gives me five plus four over five minus four which is nine so can I do that? Yes. So I double click here and say S function. 
I get that. And now inside this S function, I need to provide the name of that function. What was the name of the function? It was my s.fun, any of these, right? So here, let's grab the name and uh, go here and then under s function name, provide it and then apply. Now, look right now, this does not have two ports for the two inputs, but as soon as I apply, see what happens. Look, there we go. You see? Now it gives me two inputs because that function told it that you have U1 and U2. Okay, so now I connect U1 and U2 and I connect the output Y to my display block and run. Look. The first time is slow, but it's very fast actually because it's simple. There we go. Nine. Now if I change this to, for instance, what, three? It's going to be 5 plus 3, which is 8, divided by 5 minus 3, which is 2. 8 divided by 2 should be 4. Let's see if it works. There we go. Done. So now you see this one is really using the binary of that C code. Done. This is one way to create the S functions. Now the second way, as I said, is there is this block in Simulink called S function builder, and you can directly do that without writing a single line of source code or header code. So double click here and say S uh, function builder and bring the S function builder. And this is much easier. So if you double click here, then it opens this window, which takes the information from you. And you see, it already has the structure for that um, uh, S function already and the max file all you need to add here is to say how many inputs and how many outputs you have here what type they are what are their dimensions what kind of variable they are and so on their complexity and then once you define those variables all you need is to add your computations in here okay you see here this is based on uh, this um, I guess y prime uh, C dot max file or something okay so you can just replace your computations just right here if you put your computations here then it basically creates the wrapper and you see it starts the wrapper these are the calculations of the wrapper and finally terminating the wrapper and this is automatically will give you all the input and output ports and as soon as you say build you are good to go so let's say here to make it different, I want to create a um, the S block that receives the modulus of a gear, the number of teeth of a gear, and the pressure angle, and it speeds out for me the pit circle diameter, the base addendum, and didendum circle diameters, okay? So it wants to do some calculations for a gear, and let's say 4, 24, and uh, 14 degrees here are of course written in radians are the uh, inputs and the outputs are those uh, four diameters so i have three inputs and four outputs here so i go back here and then say what you see here i have one input one output but if i want i can right click here right and i can uh, change anything so if i don't like this name u not i just call it what i just call it m because m is the gear modulus and double is good then I right click and say add another input for me and this time I call it n okay that's another input then I right click add another input and this time I call it phi the pressure angle right and keep going down so this first output is diameter of the pit circle dp then I keep what I keep adding these uh, rest of the outputs okay so something like this three inputs for outputs now as I said the only thing you need to do is to write the formulas which relates these inputs and outputs together and the important thing is you need to make sure when you write them you write them with pointers so you have to use the asterisk before the names of the variables okay okay so here I have added the formulas the pit circle is m times n you see m has the asterisk n has the asterisk this is just a multiplication D of base circle is D of pitch circle times cosine of the angle. D of addendum is D of the pitch plus two times modulus. 
d of the d then them is d of the pH minus two and a half times modulus. So you see everything is written in terms of pointers and that's all I need to have. If you want, again, you can add uh, basically sample time here. You can talk about anything else. If you have discrete states, continuous states, anything, you can provide those. But for now, it's all I need. So the only other thing I need to do is to go and provide a name for the function. So I just call it, for instance, gear calculator or something. Right, and then the language you can specify too, but let's see, inherit it from the model, and let's see if I can build this and compile. If it does, I should get, you see here, it created for me gear.calculator.c, creates the wrapper and creates the .tlc, and finally created the one that I really care about, the max one. So now these ones are all created, and if I go and look under my folder, you see that I have the gear calculator, right? Look again, how many lines of code is this? You see, you don't want to write this by yourself. It is going to take a lot of time out of you to write all of that. Let MATLAB take care of that. And I have the wrapper one, okay, which is this, which has basically my calculations in it. Okay, and now that I got everything, let's go ahead and see if I can use this um, S function in Simulink. Okay, now take a look at what we used to have. Now you see it has added for me three input ports and four outputs, the way I described it. And all I need is to attach these to the appropriate port. And that should take care of everything okay so let's go ahead and connect and go ahead and run yes run there we go four times 24 is what 96 the 96 times cosine of 14 degrees is 93.15 96 plus 2 times 4 is 104 96 minus two and a half times 4 is 86 perfect it's doing its job you see, I created this S function, which has what? Which has this uh, basically information in it. Okay, yeah, done. So these are two different ways to create S functions in MATLAB, the legacy tool, and as I said, the S function builder. And if you wanna know more about the legacy tools, let me show you this um, uh, MathWork link. So if you go to MathWork link and search integrate C functions using legacy code tool or LCT, it shows you the steps and it shows you the kind of uh, source code and the header file that you need to have. So you need to initialize the structure first, populate the fields, create S function source file, compile that to get the max, and finally create what? the mass S function, which is that block in Simulink. This is with legacy tool. Now with the builder, uh, most of this information already there. All you need is really to uh, provide your formulas and then click on build. And it does all of this all together. Okay, so that's a lot easier and a lot more efficient. Okay, so hopefully this video was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.